I thought it'd be cool to do the video with the backdrop of one of our regular afternoon Florida summer thunderstorms. You got the rain coming down, you know, some of that white noise. Maybe it'll be relaxing, it should be relaxing. Actually, there's a lot I wanna talk about. You know, I've done many videos on, and I've commented on contradictions. How, if you pay attention, you, you can see contradictions in arguments and that will tell you that the arguments that are being made they don't have a basis in strong understanding. Like if, if you're making an argument and you end up contradicting yourself, you know, I've used the example, I've, I've talked about my, the times that I ran into certain people when I was at Fox News and I talked to them privately when we were in the green room waiting to go on our segment and they'd say stuff and then I'd see them a month later or three months later and they would say the exact opposite thing, but they were using the same argument, but it, but it was the exact opposite. And it's like, they didn't even realize that they were contradicting themselves. And I've talked here about, you know, this whole notion that monetary policy, let's say with, ref, with respect to interest rates and currency, now, now there's this whole big thing about, oh, you know, if, if the Fed cuts rates or if Trump gets rid of Powell and the dollar's gonna collapse. And yet, you know, I've mentioned the fact that we see in other systems, Turkey, Argentina, these places, there's a lot of examples where rates, they get raised, they get raised, they get raised and the currency collapses. But again, there's almost like a separate set of uh, principles or beliefs. I won't even call them principles because principles implies that, you know, there's something factual about it. There, there's something real about it. It's not. I mean, these are just basically beliefs. It's like mythology. Like the United States, the monetary system of the United States is looked at completely differently. Maybe because, you know, it is the United States. There's so much media attention here. It's the largest uh, uh, media environment of any place in the world by far. And that also includes the financial media. So it gets an enormous amount of attention and you can get these beliefs that permeate and are embraced by everybody. But yet, if you go outside the United States and you try to apply the same thing, you could see that it's total contradiction. So like now we're looking at the 10 year treasury yield, it's back up all the way back up to four and a half percent, okay? And you wonder like, well, what's causing that? Because uh, you would say, well, you know, we had a, a sort of a hot print on the CPI today, it wasn't. It came in at, um, the core came in at 0.2%, the forecast was 0.3%. The headline came in at 0.3%, the forecast was 0.3%. We're running at a 2.7% year over year inflation rate. It's, it's very tame, listen to that. <clears throat> so like, but that's, you know, that's gonna be the, the explanation. That's what they're gonna come out and say. But yet when I look outside the United States, for example, if I look at Greece, Greece has a three and a half percent inflation rate and the 10 year treasury, the 10 year government bond in Greece is at three and a half percent. Okay. Spain has like um, about equal to the inflation rate that we have here, two and a half, 2.7%. But the 10-year government bond yield in Spain is 3.23%. I mean, both of those things, Greece, Spain, and there's a lot of other examples. I'm not going to run through the whole list. Actually, what's funny is that a couple of weeks ago, President Trump, on his Truth Social platform, 
He put out a big list with a handwritten note. Hey, Jerome Powell, look at this. There were like 20 countries with lower interest rates, like way lower interest rates. The other thing about Spain and Greece is that they're not currency issuers. So basically they're, they're really, they really borrow money. Whereas the United States, we issue our own currency. So the risk of holding a Greek government bond or a Spanish government bond is infinitely higher than holding a US treasury. The only thing that really, you know, quote unquote backs a, a Greek bond or, or a Spanish bond is the fact that the ECB has said, has stated, has actually acted to support uh, those countries' bonds. You know, it, it's acting as a kind of a quasi uh, fiscal authority. But like, when it comes back to the United States, if you're asking the question like, why did rates spike up to four and a half percent? That That's Powell, that's the Fed. I mean, they set rates at four and a quarter to four and a half and we're right there and they keep saying, we're not gonna cut rates, we're not gonna cut rates, we're not gonna cut rates. And if they don't cut rates, rates are not gonna come down. And the fact of the matter is, and I've said this many times before, that the cost of credit is reflected in the cost of all goods and services. So like whatever the rate is set at, that sets the general price level. I, it can't fall much beyond that because you're setting the general price level wherever you set the rate. Because once again, the cost of credit is reflected in the cost of all goods and services. Take a look at currency. The ECB has cut rates eight times and the Euro is very strong. You don't hear anything about that. That's another example of contradiction because here, all we hear about is, oh, you know, if the Fed cuts rates, the dollar's gonna collapse. If Trump gets rid of Powell, the dollar's gonna collapse. <clears throat> it's total bullshit. That's not the way things work. If the dollar goes down because the Fed cuts rates, that is just like a mass psychosis. That is a mass psychosis of initial selling based on we're living in this bubble of information that is only applicable to the United States in their minds. They don't look outside. They don't look at these examples that I, that I gave you or that I give you. They don't look at that. They look at this. They live in this bubble of this kind of perverted, twisted, wrong, erroneous, flawed monetarism that is only applicable or practiced or, or looked at you know, through the prism of the United States financial system, I mean, it's the most ridiculous, idiotic thing in the world. Like every other place, you could go one example, two, three, four, five, you could go examples all over the world that contradicts what the belief system embedded here is all about. It's just completely wrong. And this is what we got to deal with. But like what I always say is that what it comes down to is, is an opportunity. Because you gotta go against ignorance. You always have to go against ignorance. Now it may not pan out in the immediate. It may take a little while, but <laughs> patience is the thing. Like I always say, the life is a long life. Like, like take advantage of that. Time is on your side. This is one of the examples where time is on your side. You know this saying, time is money. That's absolutely true. And I always say, I say this to my kids, you know, the one thing you can never get back is time. Once that's gone, it's gone. I mean, money you can get back, health you could sometimes get back, relationships you could sometimes get back, but time you can't get back. But in the, in the, in the context of investing, time is what makes you rich. They don't teach this. You take a newborn baby and you put $50 a month away every single month consistently, by the time that baby is like 65 years old, there's a couple of million dollars there. That's a very simple thing, just time and the compounding of interest and, and dividends and profits, that's, that adds up, it's exponential. So in this case, patience, AKA time, is on your side when you go against idiots, when you go against ignorance, which is what all this is. You cannot have, uh, um, 
you know, um, you cannot have a body of, of understanding where in one situation it's applicable and in another situation it's completely the opposite. And in the situation where it's completely the opposite, you ignore that. Pretend like it doesn't exist. And you just focus like this on the one thing that, you know, kind of uh, you curve fit your theory to what you see happening. And then you say, aha, you see, it applies to everything. No, it doesn't. And the evidence is all over the place that it doesn't apply to everything. So I'm sorry, but I just, you know, this is how I operate. This is how I operate. And, I, you know, frankly, there's no need to, to twist all kinds of crazy convoluted explanations about, you know, well, the inflation rate, it came in a little bit hotter, so it's four and a half percent and this and that. And if the, the, if the Fed cuts the rates, the dollar's going to crash. And then you have this whole entire world outside of this uh, U.S., you know, psychotic, monetarist-driven bubble that shows you that this shit, it just doesn't work that way. It's ridiculous. So anyway, tomorrow's a Social Security payment. Again, I'm saying it's a bullish environment. I don't care what happened today that the Dow was down, all right? And I bought some bank stocks today. Um, nothing is bad until August 1st. And even that, knowing Trump, that might not even happen. And we have August 15th, which is a quarterly interest payment. We have the big, the, the, the big beautiful bill, which I don't know, frankly, how that's going to play out. But I don't think there are big spending cuts in there and there are tax cuts. So, I mean, it's like to make an argument that things are bearish, I mean... Things would have to line up in a way. You'd have to see big tariff increases. You'd have to see big spending cuts in this big, beautiful bill, which I don't think that happened. Maybe on, on the Medicaid, but I still, I don't think that happened. I mean, a lot of these things, they're, they're, the way it was codified is over a 10-year period. So I don't know, it, it really boils down, I think it really boils down to the tariffs. Maybe it boils down to these doge layoffs that are gonna happen um, at the end of September or the beginning of October. I mean, like I said, we gotta see the number, we gotta see how this evolves. But all this other crap, like, you know, the dollar's gonna collapse because Trump is gonna get rid of, Powell. by the way, Powell's not going anywhere. I thought he was last week. He's not going anywhere. He's bringing in the inspector general to look over his renovation project at the Fed building to you know, give him the stamp of approval to, to push back on Trump. And I don't think the Fed is gonna raise interest rates. So we're stuck in this four and a quarter to four and a half. Sometimes you could go a little bit outside that boundary. Like we were just a, a week ago, 10 days ago, we were down at 414. Okay, that's below four and a quarter. And now we're up at four and a half. We might go to 460. I mean, that's how it goes. It's the Fed. If they say they're not going to cut rates, if they said we're never going to cut rates ever again and we're going to keep it at four and a quarter to four and a half, that's where rates are going to stay until infinity. Period. Because that's where they set it. That's where they set the rate. Just like if they said, uh, we're going to set it at zero permanently. The rate all along the curve from zero all the way out to, to 30 years. Even if they had a hundred year uh, bond, it would go to zero. If that's what they said, that we're going to set the rate at zero permanently. The whole entire curve would collapse to zero and stay there. It wouldn't, they wouldn't even have to do anything. That's how it works. <clears throat> it's ridiculous. It's just power. It's the Fed. I mean, if, you know, like, look, there's no way in the world you can explain a rate in Spain, a rate in Greece, and all these other countries. Go Google the list that Trump put out, all these other countries, because that it's up to the central banks that sets the rate. 
and Powell says four and a quarter to four and a half, and we're not cutting the rate. And it doesn't matter what inflation is. Inflation could go to zero right now if he said we're keeping it at four and a half and uh, four and a quarter to four and a half. That's exactly where it's going to stay. Inflation could go to negative. We could have we could have a deflation of ten percent a year if he said the rate's going to be four and a half percent. That's where it's going to stay. It's a monopolist. It could do what it wants with rates. It has unlimited power to set the rate. So that's how it works. Anyway, that's it for me today. Please like and subscribe. Don't forget, go to my website, pitbulleconomics.com. Sign up for a 30-day free trial, and I hope you enjoyed the rainstorm. <laughs>